You're very welcome. Back now is one of the nation's foremost experts in style, so it makes sense, <laughs> definitely not you, that he'd bring out his own <laughs> range of grooming products. The brilliant Darren Kennedy, you're uh, very welcome. How are you? Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Darren. delighted. This is my first time in since you got the new digs. Oh, since we got the welcome. Yeah. I feel like I'm in New York. We're all notionsy now, it's aren't we? It's gorgeous. You like <laughs> it? I love, it. Yeah, like I love it? the floor. I'm all I'm mad for floor. Mad We're for a good floor. floor. Love the floor. Is it yeah. stylish enough? Yeah, it's great. Yes. It's gorgeous. But I listen, we have to talk about your career because you actually started on Ireland AM, didn't you? I did, yeah, back in the days when it certainly didn't look like this. <laughs> um, I was a runner on Ireland AM and that was all with thanks to Alan Hughes, actually, because he, at the time, Alan lived around the corner from me. Yes. And I wanted to work in TV. I was in Santry. I went to school in, in, on Collins Avenue and I remember going to my guidance counsellor saying, I, I want to get into media. And he said, study communications. I'm like, I don't want to study communications, and I knew that before I came in here, so can you give me other options? Yeah, yeah. Study communications. Yeah. And I was like, I don't yeah. want to do that. Anyway, yeah. so I knocked into Alan, and I said, hiya. Um, I, I'm interested in kind of TV. Would you have any ideas? Got so you just know. rang his doorbell, called in, Literally knowing that he lived dogs. there. I said, hi, I'm Darren from number one. Aww. Uh, I believe you I believe you work in TV, because I had never seen him <laughs> at the time, because our only M or, and TV3 at the time was, was what, new. a year old? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, This is maybe 97, okay. no, 99, whatever. And uh, he was like, OK, and we got chatting. Anyway, I started coming out here as a runner while I was in university. So I'd come out a couple of mornings a week and meet and greet the guests and make coffee and basically yeah. do whatever was asked. Yeah. Of, but it was great. And you get a sense of what TV is all about doing a job like that, don't you? Oh, you yeah. You get to meet so many different people as well. Listen, I had absolutely no idea. And people ask me today, you know, how do I get a start? How do I get in? I'm like, just learn. Just get in and learn. Mm. Make coffee. If you're asked to make coffee, make sure it's the best damn coffee you can make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but you and, have you to know, do that, yeah. yeah. And I climb mean, the ladder. And just and get to know mm. people. I, mean, I think yeah. get familiar with the surroundings and what people do and and, 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 and network. And it's funny because obviously a lot of the people that I worked with back then who yeah. were maybe researchers are now executive producers Absolutely. of various shows. And Absolutely. It's brilliant, you know. And how does, it, how does it move then in terms of your career from television, television, and then where does the change come in terms of styling, fashion, that kind of world? Uh, I've had lots, I've done lots of jobs. I've like <laughs> been working since I'm a bit, I'd had my first job when I was 13 and I've never not had a job since. So I used to pump petrol in the local Maxwell station and wash cars. Mm. And I've kind of done various, I went off and lived in France for a while and um, then obviously TV and I was working in production. After about three years of Operation Transformation, I did the first three seasons of mm. that. And I used to be a reporter with Jerry Ryan show and all yes. sorts of things. And I kind of reached a point where I went, I need to do something else just for myself creatively. Mm. And that was it. I had no ambitions. I was like, I just want to do something for me. Yes. Just kind but of there was almost a like a hobby. But there was a creative itch that you wanted to scratch. Yes. But you didn't know what it was. Well, I knew it was, I kind of distilled it down. I said, it's something to do with aesthetics. It's either interiors, garden, yeah, yeah. architecture, or fashion, clothes. And I'd already done four years in university and I was like, garden architecture is another four years, not happening. Like no, I wanted to yeah. get out and do things. Yeah. And fashion was something I always loved. And I'd always kind of innately been into it. And I think it's my parents, they're, all, they're big into kind of their clothes and, you know, they always yeah, looked yeah. great. And so I followed that route. And here we are now with our own line of products. Off, didn't it? Yeah, it did. You know, I, I set up, a, I went over to Central St. Martin's in London, which is kind of one of the, the biggest kind of fashion schools. Mm. Yeah. And I did a couple of courses, again, just for myself. I put no pressure on it. I had no ambitions of doing anything other than just kind of feeding my own creativity. Mm. Uh, then I decided to set up a personal styling business and to accompany that, kind of based on my background within websites and operation transformation, I set up a website. And you've got to remember, this is about 12 years ago, yeah. 13 years ago. Uh, and then I noticed so this that was kind of pre-blogger, pre-influencer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. But I noticed the blog was doing really well. So I repositioned it and kind of made it an online magazine, mm -hmm. Help My Style, which at the time became one of the top kind of tier lifestyle blogs in the country. And then things just kind of snowballed and all my worlds kind of collided and it became a virtuous circle. <laughs> so how do we arrive then at the point now where we, you've got your own range of male grooming products? Um, I was going to say God only knows, but uh, <laughs> I have... I'd so imagine the answer involves a lot of hard work, because that seems to be a recurring theme throughout yeah. your career. You work hard. Yeah, I do. I like to roll up my sleeves mm. and uh, get stuck in. Yeah. I kind of enjoy... That's what I enjoy. I find yeah. if I plateau or if I'm doing something that's not stimulating me, I get bored very easily. And, you know, I always think, listen, 
you have one life and we all work hard uh, during that life. And if the work you're doing you don't enjoy, you can't laugh every day yeah. and have fun, well then it's not worth doing. You need to find something else. And for me, it's always about that and continual learning. Um, so, so did you see, did you see in terms of your, your products that we'll talk about, did you see a gap in the market? Did you see... Yeah, it's, it went back about five years ago. I was like, I would really love to bring out a grooming range. And I, I'm a big believer in timing in life. And I went, okay, I'm just gonna park that there. So it's something I'd like to do. And then I was working with some of the biggest kind of skincare and, and men's grooming brands in the world. I was an ambassador for La Mer, working with all these different brands all across the world, which was amazing. And I always felt there still was a gap. So there was something that wasn't quite being catered for. And I was like, I'm from Ireland. I love that. I'm so proud of being from Ireland, working in the UK, working in the US, wherever. And I always think there's a beautiful reaction when people know you're Irish. Yeah, there is, yeah there's a warmth straight away, you know, isn't there? Yeah, and especially, listen, we all know kind of brand Ireland is, it's green grass, it's fresh air, it's, it's, it's a warmth. And I went, we aren't kind of harnessing that in terms of skincare. All this skincare range, Kennedy & Co., is Irish made, and that was so important to me as so well. So it's all made here in Ireland? It's all made in Ireland, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, we've got a peat face scrub. You know, when you think of peace, yeah. you think of like, it has mummifying effects, doesn't it? I mm -hmm. mean, it, it keeps things, it's rich in mi minerals. Um, so that was really important to me. Uh, so, the, oh, that's, the, can you see them? We yeah. can, yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah, that's so what we're seeing. On that's the, yes, that's there. a hair, a matte hair clay. I've got uh, moisturizer. a moisturizer with SPF 20. Now this is so important. You know, SPF should be worn all the year round because actually the damaging rays, which are the UVA, are nothing to do with being burnt in terms of like mm -hmm. sunning yourself. Mm -hmm. They're the rays that are getting our skin all year round and they're the ones that can really kind of uh, speed up the aging process. So, so how are place. Irish men at looking after themselves, Darren, do you think? Having traveled and, you know, because I know my husband uses moisturizer and hair gel. I mean, it takes them all of 10 seconds to get ready, but he would use those products. Well, I think are most men embracing beauty yeah. products? I think there's been a mass, like a seismic shift in Irish men. I think of men of a certain generation, it's new and it's something that they never maybe grew up with. Yes. So it's a little bit of a change. Does it feel a bit vain maybe? Well, it when, wasn't part of the routine. Was yeah. It? yeah. You Do you moisturise? No. Never? No. When never I'm put moisturiser on your face? Yeah. On stage I would. If you were okay. wearing makeup, you would. Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay. Would you uh, on occasion steal your, your other half's moisturiser when she wasn't looking? No. Never. Would you not? No. Are you not going to admit to it now? Anyway? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I know he would, I think. No, I wouldn't you? admit to it, yeah, no, I wouldn't. It's never, it's, it just doesn't come into my radar. But I don't know you why. You like to feel good about yourself. Well, I do, yeah, and I, and, but I'd never treat my own skin, you know, and even my wife would say to me when I come home from work here, you take the makeup off properly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and cleanse your skin. Yeah. And that's the thing. And I think, so I think the generations that have come since uh, are definitely of a different ilk. In the mm. sense that you look at you look at the world and kind of like you know keeping fit, eating well, treating your body well, you know in, investing yeah. in clothes and also skin is a huge part of that. Mm. And listen, you've only got one skin, so you need Take to look care after of it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're getting better. Is that what you're saying? Think, men oh, or yeah. Irish men are definitely getting better. Much better. But yeah. I think the generations even like younger than me in their twenties or teens are far more clued into grooming so, and taking care so of very so quickly, tips. Quickly for the old farts like me, then give me two daily <laughs> tips I can do to instantly improve. Well, he's got well, six. Oh, well, listen, well, yeah, I've got <laughs> six. Oh, six. Then. Give, Let's yeah. go. Right. I mean, I think in terms of kind of looking your best, it's always important to keep your hair, whether it's on your face or on your head, in check. He has magnificent hair. You do have can fabulous I just say that? hair. Thanks. You have Thanks magnificent hair. It's. it's Fantastic, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a piece of art. <laughs> it's brilliant. I just think uh, it's fantastic. You know, <laughs> shout out to Christian, uh, Christian Shannon who cuts it. He there has you it because it grows like grass. So keep um, the hair in check. Keep hair in check. Use a moisturiser with SPF. I've <clears> already <throat> spoken about that, but it is so important. And it makes you feel good as well. It takes, what, 30 seconds in the yeah. morning? Um, use an eye gel, particularly if you're the type of guy who burns the candle at both ends, likes to go out in the evening, or maybe you've got kids, you're not getting enough sleep, whatever it is, you just feel tired. That in eye gel is literally a little is this, superhero Is this for product. nighttime or daytime? Both. Both, yeah. okay. And it's so cooling and what it does, it helps kind of counter puffiness around the eye, dark circles, and it also just feels really nice. Does it do anything for dry eyes? Like tired, you know, if your eyes are dry? Yeah, the skin around use? your eye, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, obviously dryness within the eye is, is a big yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's the skin around the eye, which is yeah, so yeah. delicate, and it just kind of lifts it. It's got caffeine in it, actually, oh, right. which uh, is an ingredient that we all know kind of Wake perks you up. You up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it has a metal nib, 
So you rub it just around the eye, it feels so cooling. And then also what it's doing is it's draining the, the lymphs here as well, which I, isn't done naturally. So if you rub there, it'll reduce God, the Every day is a school day. Where are the products available? Where's the eye gel for God's sake, <clears throat> The other Sarah. thing I just want to say, exfoliate. Because yeah. you're saying you need to exfoliate after makeup. The products are available in Dunn stores nationwide and pharmacies. Like Lloyd's and all the big all pharmacy the groups. Country. Yeah. Darren, yeah. continued success. Keep working hard. So much. Well done. Good to Thank see you. you. Now, up next, more office party wear over on the catwalk. Fashion is up Is next. that the exfoliate face? That's it, yeah. <laughs> all right, okay.